Good evening and welcome to a special meeting of the Northampton School Committee for Monday, March 17th, 2014. We'll begin tonight's meeting by asking the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Ms. Isabel? Present. Here. 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 Mr. Andrew Here. Mr. Ezra Helsky. Present. And Mayor Present. Your Honor. Thank you very much. So uh, we have a, um, a, a very specialized agenda for this evening's meeting, and that is to uh, continue our superintendent search. And we will begin the first item on the agenda is the announcement of the superintendent finalist candidates. And I will turn it over to the vice chair of the school committee uh, who uh, chaired our screening committee, uh, Mr. Edward Zahowski. All right. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, this evening, I'm pleased to report on the activities of the Northampton superintendent screening uh, committee. Over the last three weeks, the screening committee met on several occasions to review applications and interview candidates for the position of superintendent of schools. And we are very pleased with the overall <coughs> quality of the applicant pool. There were 22 completed applications for the position. The screening committee reviewed all 22 applications and subsequently selected a number of candidates who were invited to meet with the screening committee for a preliminary interview. Following the preliminary interviews and after much discussion and consideration, the screening committee during its meeting on March 12th voted to recommend three candidates for further consideration by the Northampton School Committee. The three candidates listed in alphabetical order are Lori Kasna, uh, who has been the Director of Personnel and Student Services in Pembroke, Massachusetts since 2011. She's a resident of Plymouth, Massachusetts. Ms. Kasna has been a special education teacher and elementary team chairperson in Situate and Duxbury and from 2007 to 2011 held positions of coordinator and director of special education also in Pembroke. Ms. Kasna earned her bachelor's degree from the University of Arizona, a master's in education and certificate of advanced graduate study from Bridgewater State College and a Juris Doctor Professional Degree in Legal Studies from Suffolk University Law School. Uh, the second is Jordana Harper Ewart of Amherst. Uh, she is in uh, of Amherst, is Chief Schools Officer overseeing 16 schools in Springfield, Mass, a position she's held since January of 2013. Over a four-year period, Ms. Harper Ewart was a teacher and administrative intern in Greenfield, Springfield, and Amherst, and in 2007 was appointed as principal of the, Sar uh, the Sergeant Robert R. Litwin Elementary School in Chicopee. Ms. Harper Ewart holds a bachelor's degree from Mount Hoyo College, a master's degree in education from Endicott College. She is a doctoral candidate in educational leadership at Lesley University. And third, John Provost of East Stampton has been the superintendent of schools in North Brookfield, Massachusetts since 2011. His professional experience includes teaching English in the Dudley Charlton Re Regional District, an education coordinator for EDCO Collaborative in Brookline, special education teaching and supervisory positions in Hoyoke from 2000 to 2003, and he was the director of special services in Agawam from 2003 to 2011. Dr. Provost holds a bachelor's degree from Westfield State College and earned master's and doctorate degrees in education from the University of Massachusetts. On behalf of the school committee and the city of <coughs> Northampton, I'd like to thank the members of the screening committee for their many hours they devoted to reviewing applications, interviewing candidates, and deliberating during the preliminary selection process. The conversations were lively, insightful, and courteous. It was a pleasure to work with this group of truly dedicated citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
And thank you again to the uh, members of the screening committee for their service uh, to the Northampton Public Schools. <coughs> we'll now uh, move on, now that we have the announcement of the three finalists, we'll now um, have a discussion um, on the rest of the superintendent uh, candidate interview process. And I'd like to recognize uh, Dr. Arthur Betancourt from NESDEC, who's been helping, advising the city on this search process. And we'll turn the floor over to you, Dr. Betancourt, to discuss the next steps now that we've selected our three finalists. Thank you very much, and congratulations on coming to this, uh, this portion of your search. There was a lot of hard work that, uh, that led to this, and uh, I had the pleasure of meeting with your screening committee uh, for their first meeting, and I, I was really, truly impressed with the, uh, the commitment that folks had toward uh, having this search uh, bring to you three, what I think are three really fine candidates. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, may I pass something? Please, to please. What I'm giving you now are the actual application packets for the candidates that uh, we'll introduce to you. These packets are considered personnel files, and therefore they're confidential and they're marked as such. Mr. Zukowski has uh, copies of public resumes which can be handed out to the, uh, to the public. But these documents that I'm giving you will remain confidential. <clears throat> Thank you. And I put together some materials that will help us with the conversation this evening and some in terms of some of the decisions that, uh, Thank you. that we can talk about for you to consider. One of the things I wanted to bring to your attention right away is that you're ahead of schedule. Uh, you were originally, if you look at the, uh, the folder that I gave you and you take out the timeline, which is a document that looks like this, you can see uh, if you move down into the, uh, into the end of the grayish blue section here, candidates recommended to school committee. Uh, we actually had planned for a meeting on March 20th to announce the candidate. So you're actually ahead of schedule. And those few days uh, of being early can actually make quite a difference in terms of you moving ahead now with the, uh, the next phases of the search. <clears throat> also on the left-hand side of the, uh, the packet here, we have um, an outline of some of the things that we will want to go over this evening. And essentially what we're talking about is the school committee's role moving forward uh, with the search, which is somewhat different from the screening committee's role. The screening committee uh, did most of its preliminary screening work, or did all of its preliminary screening work, and, and uh, the interviewing of the candidates in executive session. Uh, the fact is that now, uh, as you move forward, the school committee will do virtually all of its work in public session, uh, including the decision making regarding the, the search uh, phases going forward as well as your conversations with, uh, with, the, uh, with the superintendent candidates, and even your final conversation regarding your final decision. All of that occurs in public. About the only thing from this point on that would occur in executive session will be your ultimate contract negotiations with your, your finalists, with the final candidate that you choose. So what we really want to talk about tonight uh, are your uh, ideas in terms of how you'd like to move forward. There are a lot of, a lot of different things, a lot of different ways that we, this can be done. Um, but the fact of the matter is the decisions on how it's done, I can provide options for you, but the decisions on how it's done uh, rest with the school committee. So there are a couple of things that we should talk about right away. One is the schedule in terms of how you would like to interact with the candidates moving forward. And then uh, once we determine that, determining how interviews will unfold, uh, how you will actually go about the task of setting yourselves up for the interviews. In terms of 
next steps? Um, as I said, there are a number of ways to go. And um, let me just sort of outline those for you. Some school committees choose simply to do an interview of each candidate, um, call references, perhaps, um, and make a decision. Uh, that obviously reduces the timeline necessary for the decision making, but it doesn't necessarily give you all of the information that you might need going forward. Some school committee members choose to have the visit, to have the candidates visit the district, uh, interact with people in the district, give people an opportunity to <coughs> provide some feedback to the, to the school committee, um, and then subsequent to that an interview. Uh, and then subsequent to the interview, perhaps a visit to the candidate's present district or institution. Um, all of these things um, sort of play out in terms of the, the kinds of activities that you folks are comfortable with and in terms of the, the timeline and the length of the timeline. For example, if you choose to have candidates come in-house to visit you, what typically happens is a candidate will come for the better part of a day or perhaps an afternoon. We'll tour the district, we'll speak with people, and then that evening we'll have an interview with the school committee. If you have three finalists, as you do now, that's usually done on three evenings. It can be done, you can double up, but typically it's done uh, a day devoted to each of the candidates plus an evening. And then if you choose to visit the candidates, again, that's another, uh, and that's usually done by a small subcommittee, which might be made up of all school committee members, could be made up of school committee members and others who would, <coughs> excuse me, visit the districts of, uh, of the candidates. And again, this requires some time. So part of what, uh, what you're dealing with is not only the process in terms of the kinds of information you need, but also the timeline that you have in terms of choosing the candidates. Now, some of these candidates um, are, in fact, um, in other searches. So um, it would not be unusual for you to be competing against any number of districts for any of these candidates. So that's something to take into consideration as you move forward. Um, so perhaps what I would do at this point is turn it over to you, Mr. Mayor, and, and ask uh, you th through you to, to maybe determine how the, the school committee feels comfortable moving okay. forward. So let me open it up for discussion. Um, Ms. Minnick. Can I just ask a clarifying question? Did you say that visit site visits to the candidates' dis current districts would be done after interviews, or can it be done before? It can be done in any order, and it varies depending upon how you want how you want the thing to how you want the search to play out. But it, you could visit the candidates' districts first. One of the things to consider when you visit the candidates, however, is that they need lead time to set that up. And that it needs to be a fair amount of time because coming, your coming into the district can cause some disruption. So we want to provide as much time as we can uh, for the, for the uh, candidates to inform the people in the district and set up your itinerary uh, so that you can make the best of your visit and the most of your visit. Did you have a... I just wanted to ask that one question. Okay. So, um, other folks have any questions or comments or discussion about the various options for how do we structure this process? I would say the one comment I have is that um, given our last search and what um, people in Northampton have said to me and I'm sure other people that they needed, they would like a little bit more time for their input to be heard by us. That felt rushed last time. Mm -hmm. So whatever that means for here, just anything but that rushed kind of all in one night. Okay. Yes. I, I would just second that. I think that's important. And also, as, as many of us will recall, we were sitting here and we had to take in all the, the sheets of information that we had from people and wasn't really, uh, didn't have a lot of time to digest that information. So anything we could do to avoid that, I would suggest. Those are the public comment sheets and yeah. from the from the administrators and the teachers and the public. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, I would, I would agree. I think when we schedule dates, whatever we schedule, we should um, schedule a date to, to make a decision that is at least, you know, at least I think three days after our last, you know, interview. So that we have, so we plan to have several days to, to sleep on it before we start to discuss it publicly. That would be my suggestion. Just a housekeeping? Oh, and then. Um, 
Well, I just one concern about that, and I'd like to just get Mr. Betancourt to comment on it. He did make a statement that um, three finalists that we have in front of us, in fact, could be involved in other searches. And so I would like to move as quickly as mm -hmm. we can, mm -hmm. but um, also offer enough time for community input. But uh, I think there is a little sense of urgency now that we've made our announcement of finalists to keep the process <coughs> moving and not spread it out too long. Right. So. Um, if, a seven, if we didn't have to sleep it on, on it for 72 hours, maybe 24 <laughs> hours or 36 hours would somewhere be a good compromise. Some That's all. Other than the same night. <laughs> right. <laughs> sounds good to me. Well, would, just to add to that, I would say out of respect for the candidates, because once they've been through the interview, sitting there waiting on pins and needles, wondering what the result of it is. Well, mm -hmm. People have told them when that date will be. They'll know yeah. Yeah. it lacks for two right. days. Right. They can take two days, but it is. <laughs> I think I understand your concern and I agree with it, but I also want to be sensitive to their feelings. So I would think if we could do it the next night or the night after, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. So it's not to keep them on tender hooks any longer than they need to be. Okay. Other, uh, other comments? So let, for, you've heard some of the discussion. Uh, let me try to, to help. <coughs> um, one of the ways that you can shorten a search um, and I'm not I'm not advocating for this but it in in terms of, of uh, the fact that you may in fact you you may be competing with other school districts for for some of these candidates uh, one of the ways that you can shorten um, your work is to substitute for a site visit to their district intensive telephone calls to references um, that can that can give you some time at the end. And that's a decision you don't have to make now. You can make it as you move down. Because in fact, as you go through, if, if what I'm hearing is that you want the candidates to visit this district and then interview in the evening or something like that, and you want to provide ample time for community input, you may in fact learn uh, as much as you need to know about the candidates at that point to feel comfortable with the decision. So the, the site visits to their district, you could hold out as an option until you've you've moved into the process and that might give you some flexibility um, I, I think I'm hearing mr. mayor that people uh, are gravitating toward a, a visit to this district and and interviews in that evening am I over interpreting that or um, I, I think that's okay I think the concern was that last time that it all happened on the same day so okay. I think we had, did we I think we had all three visiting the same day and then interviewing the same evening so it was kind of a lot that can be very difficult a long day for staff and also to try to coordinate all, okay. all of that so okay. I think that's so I think that's the yes and again I'm just the the other side of that is that it's one long day versus three days of having three separate candidates in the district and it's difficult for parents to you know to show up for interviews on yeah. separate nights so having the candidates come in one after another while it makes for a difficult day for the staff and a difficult day for the candidates mm -hmm. it actually mm -hmm. is kind of easier so I I definitely think that we need to put time between the interviews and our decision I think that was okay. clear mm -hmm. yeah. the rest of it I think is kind of what whatever works okay Mr. Moore. Yeah, I, would, I think I may be saying the same thing, but maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> the, if I had to choose. Because you don't know what I you're saying, or because you don't know what I said. <laughs> right. If I had to, no, I know what I'm going to say. If I had to choose, if it, it was a matter of choosing, if I was going to use three days for three separate interviews versus three days to think about the interview, um, the interviews, I would take the three days to think about it versus spreading out the interviews and then having tomorrow, let's make a decision. I, I feel like that's. If that, if that was the choice. <laughs> and I know it may not be the choice because when we get down to actual dates, it may not prove to be that. Yes? I, I would actually agree. I think um, doing them all in one evening makes more sense as long as we can do it planfully. Um, I think it's helpful when you have all three candidates interviewing in the same night. For me, it might be easier to compare them and to compare their answers. So. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so as a, a minor counterpoint to that, one of the criticisms we got last time to, to the point about parents is to have three visiting all day that's still going to be put a crimp in somebody's time to get off work or, or whatever it is whereas if it's 
three separate nights, and if we do it here, for instance, and we have the television, that might be able to help as well for people who can't get here in person. Any guidance? <laughs> <laughs> there really isn't. It, uh, I think it really depends upon what you're comfortable doing. And, and as you can see from the discussion, there are pros and cons to both. Um, I, I really don't know what to tell you other than we're happy to, to work with, with whatever format you choose to follow. And, and there, there seems to be some, some divergence of opinion as to how that should go. So okay. I guess I'd have to hear more. Do you offhand know sort of what time frame we're looking at for interview dates? I think you're probably looking at uh, next week, early next week. That soon? I, if you, yeah, yeah I think that if you want to move on this, I, I think you'd be looking at next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so, so I guess we should try to reach some consensus. So it sounds like the options that we're discussing are to sort of mimic the format we had before, which was to, to try to consolidate the visits and the interviews in one session, um, but then to put off the actual deliberation until another a night other than the, the interview night, um, which is what we ended up doing. Uh, we did end up doing that last time. We didn't make a, I don't believe we made a decision that night. We did defer it for a couple of nights. Um, we were exhausted by the end of the three interviews. So, so we did, that's sort of the format we followed before. The concern was the visits happened during the day and then we got feed, parents filled out feedback forms throughout the day and then we got them that night. So we really had to try to figure out how did we, I mean, I guess then we, we would just have to work with that as we went along, there, so. If I may, there is, there is an option that you could explore. I don't know that it will work for you folks. You could interview the candidates on one night and set up visitations on separate days subsequent to that, mm -hmm. if that would work in terms of uh, giving folks in the community an opportunity to interact. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another possibility. Okay. It requires, it requires the candidates to come back twice instead of once, um, but if we can schedule it, that could be done as, as well. And, then, and so there would be some sort of a public, uh, an opportunity for the public to meet with those candidates. Yeah, and it could be something as simple as some sort of a reception um, in the afternoon. Um, you can break up and, and have uh, separate groups that the, the, the applicants would meet with. For example, you might have um, uh, a forum for faculty and staff at three o'clock in the afternoon or whenever you get out, whenever teachers are available. You might have a, a, uh, an opportunity for the candidate to meet with um, administrative staff from 4.30 to five or whatever, and then perhaps a, a, a light refreshment uh, uh, reception at <coughs> 6.30, something like that. I mean, it's really whatever works for you folks. It's not unusual for the parent teacher group to, or for the parents group to, to become involved and maybe sponsor the, re, the receptions in the evening if, if, if your folks are, you know, are um, wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Schell. Um, I just had, maybe I missed this, but last time we also didn't get to the stage about the visiting the candidates' districts. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if that's something that we're going to be doing, that would, of course, extend the timeline. A little bit. Uh, so I just wonder, would we be thinking about visiting all three? Would we be thinking about visiting one or two? Looking for the wisdom of the group on that, because that could give, if it gives us more time, which it will, that could take care of one pressure point. Did you have a thought on that? I did have a thought on that. When we did the principal searches at the schools, we um, went to um, the home of the person that we decided upon and before we made the ultimate decision it was basically offered to whomever contingent upon the home visit and um, as Mr. Betancourt said a lot of information was gathered through all the different processes so that was one thought I had on that and then the other thought to go on the same thing is <coughs> that it's an awful lot on the even though the candidates would have to come back 
it's an awful lot on the candidates, and they themselves had said that to me, the, that about um, that it was a very long day to do the interviews and to meet the people, and that it's it was very stressful for them because it was so different. I mean, and it did feel so rushed. So, in a way, even though they are coming back, it might actually be more fair or feel better if they did interviews and that type of thing one day, and then go out and do the form and the greeting of the people another day. So, those are the two thoughts I had. Yes. Whatever we do, I, I do think, I mean, I hear the reception. I'm, I'm hoping implicit in that is a time for a formal question period for parents. I mean, it could be any way, any, you could structure it any way you wished, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What's the bet, I mean, this might sound like a silly question, I don't mean it to, but what is the benefit, I mean, I'm looking at the resumes quickly, of visiting their district? Because it seems like having really rich kind of conversations with their references would we glean a lot, given what their current positions are. And what, can you give your professional opinion about visiting the district itself, what that could add? Well, I think it has value in terms of the, the number of people that you might interact with as you're, <coughs> for example, as you're walking around the district, you might want to talk to a paraprofessional, you might want to talk to a custodian, uh, folks that you might not necessarily run into or might not necessarily contact by telephone. It, it sort of gives you a broader flavor. On the other hand, I will say, more and more districts, in our experience, more and more districts are opting for the intensive telephone conversations rather than the visits to the district. And if I may just come back around in terms of how you might proceed toward deciding who you're going to visit, you might want to think about that too, because if you narrow down your field too soon, you may find that you're, you're losing the very candidate that you're, you're trying to land. So I would suggest that you keep your options open as long as you can. So. If you're going to make a decision to, to visit only one candidate, you've pretty much, you've pretty much done it. But at that point, um, if that candidate is being looked at by other districts, um, other districts can also accelerate to the point where they can make a decision um, and, and perhaps um, interfere with your decision, if you will. Um, so you want to be careful about how you narrow down the field and, and when you <coughs> So, uh, so we've just discussed an, an option of having all three interviews, have the interviews occur on one day, and then set up the community, um, the community me meetings, the staff meetings, the other, you know, the more public face of the process on a different day. Um, and, would, and would that happen, so that would happen all on the same day staggered, or it would be the same? <coughs> Or just yeah. three separate days, basically. Could be either, whatever okay. you chose, you know, okay. however you wanted to organize it. <clears throat> I think I, the important thing is is determining the date upon which you folks are going to interview okay. candidates, because I think everything probably flows from that date. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Blue. And then. Well, just in response, um, I would think that to have the one day to the interviews and the day for all three of them to come so that we don't stagger the days but so that we staggered what they were doing during the days so that the public could all be there for one day and visit all three of the candidates as could the administrators and everything else so that's what I was thinking okay how long would you how, how long would a session like that last I mean a half an hour 45 minutes Five minutes maybe okay yeah. so then it would basically be you know, 45, 45, 45. Rotating, rotating around, if I'm understanding. Rotating around. You can do it that way, yeah. Yeah. That's what we did last time. Okay. I just, the public part of it, though, you'd want it to probably be during non-working hours. We did that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Well, last time when we did it, we um, weren't able, maybe it was a principal one, but we weren't able as a school committee member to go in and watch the public and see the questions that they were asking because we were busy with an interview of someone else. And personally, I would have liked to have gone in and, and, and watched the process, you know, listen to the public and the types of questions and just seen the whole process um, as I did at the, at the principal searches. You know, and it was more informative and I did learn more even just by the types of questions when I could compare the types of questions that were asked of each of the candidates by the same exact crowd. It was interesting to see the differences that, that came up. Sounds like that would be an option this time though because you, you, wouldn't, be yeah, you wouldn't be interviewed. Right. So, okay. Right. Okay, so, um, Mrs. Minnick. My, my question was simply whether we would schedule time for parents to meet with the candidates before or after our interviews. Okay. I mean, it sounds like 
uh, what Dr. Beckencourt is saying is that we first have to, we have to figure out a date that we know that the school committee can do these interviews on. Right, and let me also just offer this Saturdays for interviews work if if that loosens things up for you folks. Sometimes that proves to be a good option for the for the interviews for the candidate interviews. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I mean, we we. We could also try to determine the date tonight sure, yeah. uh, and then build on that if we thought that there was a date that we could try to schedule these interviews yeah. for. If you wish to, or if, if um, you know, if people need to look at their calendars, scheduling meetings, as I understand it, is, is not something deliberative in terms of the open exactly. meeting law. Yeah. So if you wanted to think about that and, and have someone get back to, to us at NESDEC with, with dates, uh, if you have in mind, we can do that as well, whatever works. I guess what I'm saying to you is, if we were, if, if we could only meet, you know, on a Thursday or Saturday, or you know, when we could meet in the week may determine whether we would do the interviews first or the visits first, or because um, it sounds like you're recommending we try to keep this process somewhat compressed and not. I think drag it's to it your out advantage, yeah. I really because do. of all the other searches that may be going on. I do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I might mention that next week you have two other commitments. Mm -hmm. You have a spelling bee. <laughs> on Wednesday evening, and we have your regular school committee meeting on Thursday evening for next week. That's the week after next. The week of the 24th. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Time goes mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's spring. There, there is Saturday. Is <clears throat> there is Saturday the 29th. Okay. Or even, a fr even the Friday the 28th, I suppose. Friday the 28th. And so, and and could we? I mean, I guess it could happen whatever time, um, but we just have to find a time that we could all or, or a quorum. Have a slumber party. <laughs> Go to bed. Um, okay. If, if you're going Friday, then I would suggest that it's evening because a lot of you are working. If it's Saturday, I'm sure you could set something up either in the morning or the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'll just go on record and say I'm out of town next week after Tuesday. Okay, next week after Tuesday. Next week. When do you come back? I will miss the spelling bee. I will miss the Thursday night meeting. Okay. I've already extended my regrets. But when do you come I, back? So we know the other end. Sunday end. night. Sunday. Okay. So that's not going to So that puts that Saturday I'm out. One person. Yeah. Okay. The rest of the board okay. is here. So, so what I guess I'm hearing is that we're saying if we, our current plan is, is to try to interview these three people us try to interview these three people on, at one on one day and we're thinking that we would like to have these three people come to sort of meet various other groups in the community um, also all on one day mm -hmm. but on a different day mm -hmm. and if for example the day when we can interview them it seems far away we would have the the meet the people in the community on a day sooner in in the interim whereas if we were like able to interview them all um day after tomorrow or something um <laughs> then we would do the community meeting time after that is that the that's right is that where we're at now in this discussion that pretty much is it okay and actually if if you're coming back on Sunday. Does that mean you're available on a, is Monday a bad day for folks to meet, like the 31st? So that you could have the visitations next week and be prepared to interview. I don't want to put the, I don't want to set the date, but is, is that a possibility or are we getting close? Fine with me. Monday the 31st. Mm -hmm. that's, I, it just yes. appears to me that yep. that's yep. Yep. sort of coming up. So that would be two weeks from tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so next week we would try to schedule the community meetings, community uh, forums. Well, I'd rely on you folks. Mm -hmm. is, is, that po is next week a possibility to do that? Mm -hmm. if, if I worked with you, Regina, in terms yeah. of setting something up? We could do that. We just, um, we need to avoid Wednesday. But we could come up with a date next week. I'm sure we could work that. Okay. Uh, yes. Would the um, candidates themselves, um, yeah. What would be better for the candidates for the interview process? Would a Saturday be better for them coming in? Because um, I'm also thinking of the public, too, and trying to get it done quicker. So since it wouldn't work for us to interview, would um, the candidates you think would prefer a Saturday? 
Uh, easier for the public and the candidates? I, mean, I can't speak for the candidates, but Saturdays tends to be a, a more flexible day. But you're, you're, you are, in fact, going to be missing a school committee member. So. I'm, I'm here until next Tuesday, so if you can get them in this week. Oh, this Saturday? <laughs> I don't care. What oh. I can do, yeah, I, I was going to say Monday about this week. Yeah. Oh. So then we're also going to have another meeting two nights from that. I'm sorry. You need to interrupt. Well, you're going to have another meeting two nights from when we meet, so I think we need to keep that in mind as well. I may or may not be available in the very beginning of April for a medical procedure. Okay. If that matters. Okay. So Saturday, this Saturday, the twenty-second. The twenty-second. Any any thoughts on this Saturday, the twenty-second? It's soon, but it's doable. Well, there's. <clears throat> I think it's a great idea. Um, and we're talking, uh, you know, it's probably two and a half to three hours. Presumably. Yeah, it's, it's probably a, a full morning or a morning. most of an afternoon, one or the other. Yeah. Well, it's got to be at least three hours. If we're doing it this Saturday, though, would it matter which one we did first again? Right. I mean, are we still stuck with, I mean, not stuck with, have we, we haven't decided one way or the other. So if we're going to do this Saturday, we could go back and do the interviews first and then worry about doing the people. So, I mean, if we're looking at it, then we can change it back or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? I do, but I think okay. we're just trying to figure out what the consensus is. Um, so right. if this were, so Saturday, what time would something like this typically begin? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. I mean, we have two local candidates. Yeah, I would say nine o'clock, and you might want to go until one, one thirty. Okay. Because you'd want some time in between, I think, to, to take a break and to, to think. Okay. Any, anyone have any uh, thoughts about that? I just that? have a question. So what are we thinking about for this Saturday? Are we thinking of going for us interviewing, or are we thinking of the public? For, it would only be for the school committee, yeah. Okay, so we're thinking of, uh, okay, for the, I think then difficult. the public will be different. I, think I prefer them afterwards. Well, I think it would be difficult to hold the, the visitation meetings on a Saturday, because you also want them to meet with staff in the buildings. Right. So unless you're going to call staff in on Saturdays. Right. Um, I don't like that very much. Uh, that's not. I, I don't know that that's. You're not going to be able to get the same number of people that are here. So. Well, I agree. I mean, I, I'm in support of that. Then I just was clarifying. Yep. Yes. As far as the scheduling on Saturday, I would suggest. I'm not sure if people need a long break, but I mean, I certainly think we could do an interview an hour. I think that would be reasonable. I don't think we need to stretch it out. That's my opinion. More than that. Yeah. Well, I think they're an hour, but I would suggest you have. 10 minutes between, right. minimal. Mm -hmm. You may want to refine your questions. Mm -hmm. You want some time to, to perhaps jot down some notes. <clears throat> Maybe go to the bathroom. Mm. And go to the bathroom, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting idea. Okay. That's a good question. So, I, I, so, um, so I, sounds like the folks that are here, at least, it's doable in the morning, um, on this Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if you'd like to try to make that happen. Um, if, the, if our candidates are not available then, would Monday evening be available? I think our candidates will be available, in my sense. <laughs> Probably, but, uh, but. Is that an issue, or is that? Well, I, I, you bring up a good point. If, if there's an alternative that in the event that I can't get everybody in, is there another date you can offer? Um, okay. For example, if Monday I, the 24th, if I could get only two of the three in on Saturday, could you offer another date where you could be available in the evening for an interview? And you can do Monday the 24th, right, Lisa, before you leave? I can do the 24th Monday also. Anyone else? I can. Yes, although I can say I know that this room is booked that night for another event um, that I'm supposed to be at, but, if, but that's okay. Um, I can certainly work around that. So the 24th. Um, Tuesday night. What's that? Go for Tuesday night. You can do Tuesday night? Yeah, I can too. You can do Tuesday? I thought you were leaving Tuesday. I'm leaving after Tuesday. Oh, after I'm Tuesday. After Tuesday. Okay. So Monday Tuesday. or Tuesday. I mean, I, just, I know that this room is booked for on Monday for a different meeting, but that's so Monday or Tuesday night. Um, anyone have a preference on that as an alternate date? I don't know. Okay. So it sounds like we have. Um, Three dates. Three? Three. So, okay. um, so it's Saturday the 22nd from approximately 9 to 12. Yeah. It would be Monday the 24th, approximately 7 to of 9. Of the two, I would prefer the 23rd, I mean, the 25th over the 24th. Okay. Um, but that's, again, and also this room will not be available that night. Okay. So if that's a consideration. 
So Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, the beginning time would be 7? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Saturday, you said At the 9? Okay. Could it be earlier than 7? or did, what's Can people make it earlier than 7? I can make it could it be 6 o'clock? If you wish. That would just make it a little six, bit of an earlier. Year. Starting at six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now just so we're clear, it could be that Saturday doesn't work for any of them. Are you giving me the, the authorization then to, to work on the Monday and Tuesday? Trying to get them all in on one evening, but if I can't get them in on, on one of those two evenings? Yes? Is that I believe that's mean? yes. Preferably Tuesday. Preferably Tuesday. Got that. But first choice was to have all three of them on the same day. Right? Yeah, I think that's our they, first choice. Yeah. yeah, first choice is everyone. That's the first choice. But it, in the event <clears throat> that we can't do that, this this is a good fallback. Is am I interpreting that correct? I think that's. I think we're interpreting Saturday as our first choice. So Saturday is our first choice for all three. But if we can't do three, and we can, they can do three on Tuesday or Monday, then we would prefer to do all three. Is that correct? What you're finally that's saying? What saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Let me just check you out on that now, so I know what you, what you, the way you're interpreting that. It could conceivably be that the interviews would be on more than one evening. Preferably not, though. Preferably not. But it's conceivable that, for example, two could come in on a Saturday and one could come in on a Tuesday. Only if we can't get all three of them to come in on the Tuesday. At that point, our first that choice isn't that is all three on Saturday. Our second choice is all, all three, three some other time. Right, yeah. and the third and choice is to split them up. Down. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So it sounds like Saturday's a preference if we could only just do it all, all three. Yeah. Yeah. If I can't get all three on one evening, I will. You can follow speak back. with Regina, and yeah. we'll, we'll see how we go. We can, we can go back out to we'll the group. We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. We'll figure it out. Okay. And then you'll work with. And so that allows us the opportunity then to do the community visit some other day that week. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and, and um, again, if, if you were to give Regina and myself the, the flexibility to work those things through, we could probably do it offline. And well, Wednesday and Thursday are, are well, Thursday we have, a meet, we have a meeting, and then Wednesday is a large school community event here. Yeah. So that's going to be a tough night to try to schedule it. For it me. always happens. That's, yeah. you know, the um, conflicts all over. So the place. that sort of leaves the 24th and the 25th. Mm -hmm. Unless um, we're doing interviews. So doing you interviews. may have to, that date could be driven by, yeah. um, by whatever happens with the interviews. <clears throat> if, if they can come the 24th, then maybe it's the 25th. Okay. And I guess the 31st would be a fall back for the but visit. Friday the 28th, why did we go all the way to the 31st? I just don't know if you'd had an, an event on a Friday evening, how many parents you would, um, if you were to have the forum on a Friday evening. I'm just not sure that that would be. Um, you were saying it's date night. It's date <laughs> night, yes, it's date night. Okay, so just to be sure we're clear. Okay. Your first preference is to have all three candidates meeting on the same day or evening. Mm -hmm. Your first choice is Saturday, the 22nd. Your second choice is Tuesday, the 25th. And your third, your third choice is Monday, the 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday and Tuesday, you'd begin at 6 p.m. The Saturday, you'd begin approximately 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. I got that right? Perfect. Yes, okay. And um, are you authorizing me to work with yes. Regina on the visitations? Yes. Okay. Um, community members will have enough time to notice on this. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. We can also do a, rob a robo call home as well to give plenty of notice mm -hmm. to let them know about the forums. And That's great. That's a yeah. great idea. Now you'll need, at some point you will want to make a decision or put yourselves in a position to make a decision <coughs> about whether or not you're going to visit the candidates. So you're... Uh, you have some time to do that, although you really have to meet in order to make that kind of a decision, I think. It's not one you can necessarily make offline, so. Is it one we could make on the day of the interviews, or? Yes. If after yes. the interviews, we could you make? Absolutely could. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I mean, well, we also have, we have a meeting scheduled next Thursday as well. We could, we could add sure. it to the agenda, mm -hmm. yep. particularly if the forums happen before that meeting, we sure. can add that to the agenda for Thursday as another item, just a discussion point. Okay. 
that talk about good. whether we schedule visits. Okay. These are all uh, posted meetings. Mm -hmm. All of them. And uh, in fact, I would even post the visitation days if I were you. Yes. There may be school committee members roaming around. And even though it's not technically a meeting, I think to post them all is, is a good idea. Just post it as if it were an open meeting. Mm -hmm. Would there be anything wrong with having that discussion tonight to figure out whether we wanted to do site visits to the, for these candidates or not? Well, we certainly could, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. It sounded like people wanted to have that as an option, mm -hmm. um, but go ahead. Well, my thought on that is if we have, a, I mean, if, if we, when we go through the process, if we as a committee basically decide, wow, this person stands above and beyond everyone else and that's what we decide then we may not really want to do all three of the site visits I mean we can leave ourselves open to that if it's I mean it, I don't know if it's a runaway or not I have no idea I haven't looked at them at all so I don't know but um, we might not want to do all of the three site visits like we didn't with the principal search last time at the, and we just did the ones that we ended up taking and making sure before we offered it to the person but I don't know, and I also don't know if that will matter, if you, what you, whether you think we should see all of them, considering the fact that some of them are being asked about in other districts. So that, I, to me, would change that also, that maybe yeah. we should go out just because other people are going to. Out of a sense of fairness that everybody should have the same sort of experience. Yeah. So if you're going to do site visits, you should do site visits. If you're not, you don't. And if you're not going to do site visits and you're going to do calling references, then that's fine. That's why I thought we could just go ahead and make that decision now. About well, I think the principals, decide. they used it more as a vetting. They used it more to vet them at that point after they had already basically Again, decided. I, I think that, th that everybody should have the same experience, and I, I think that um, the, the superintendent searches of which I've been a part before now, we have done not the most recent one last fall, but prior to that, we did site visits for a number of candidates. I, I guess we didn't do one last spring either. But before that, we always did site visits. In fact, people flew to Maine and California, and or the, maybe they drove to Maine. But I mean, we, we sent people across the country to look at candidates. And I thought it was valuable. But I will tell you that in one instance, we sent some people here and some different people there. And that was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Whoever's doing site visits, it needs to be the same group going to each place because we ended up with the people who went to California liked that person, the people who went to Maine liked that person, and the people who went <laughs> locally liked that person. And it, we sat here and debated for hours because of that. So for that reason, I'd suggest that whoever's doing the site visits do the site visits. And I will admit also that there is some significant um, expense depending on where you're going these candidates are more local but you know it's it's somebody's time and effort <coughs> and it is um, if for for the candidate they're actually pulling people out of classrooms they're they're selecting different people that and they're scheduling much the same way that we schedule people when they're coming here to meet with a variety they're scheduling someone to meet with you in their district so it it's uh, vaguely disruptive and it's a worthwhile disruption but it is a dis it's, it's a commitment for them so if we're not going to do it we can save them the angst of even thinking about it by just saying right now that we're just going to do telephone interviews so do you have a preference i i don't really have a preference and i uh, and mr ball said something about thinking that we should save the site visits until after we've done the interviews and i would have said the exact opposite but you know, I think if your experience is that more and more districts these days are doing a, a, an in-depth telephone interviews with the different references, that seems reasonable to me. I mean, I think there are some things to be learned from doing a site visit, but I also think it's time consuming and it's a big commitment. And I'm not sure, as I said, I think you have to send the same group to each place or it doesn't work. And that's an even big, that's maybe three days, mm -hmm. certainly two days of taking somebody and saying, okay, now you're not doing the rest of your life for those two days, mm -hmm. which, so I would say phone, I guess, if I had to choose. Okay. So that's a, okay. All I just want to say is if we do choose the site visits, I volunteer to do any of the one to three days that needed to be done if that's necessary. So um, okay. whatever, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I can see advantages to both of them. I can see advantages to going and seeing that they're vetted after we've already made the decision and do the phone visits. Uh, and I, 
I think maybe we should go and see all three of them. I mean, if that's what the other districts are doing, I think maybe we should go see them too. But I don't care. Okay. We've got Mr. Moore, then the superintendent wanted to add something. Yeah, I just wanted to add my voice to what Lisa said. I think we should decide now what we're doing in terms of process as opposed to waiting until we've gotten partway through and then seeing if we're going to make more process. Um, and and that, so that's the first question. I think we should decide now what we're doing in terms of visits or, or, or interviewing references. And I, and it, and it, my my thought right now is that I, um, I I I feel like we should not do the site visits. I, th I th in terms of both the timeline, but also in terms of the. Um, you know, I I just I just I just don't know that you get a complete enough picture. You know, it's, it's, it's you know you might you might tend to give it more weight than it ought to get. Is I guess what I'm sort of saying because you made a significant investment in it, so you'd like to give it a lot of weight, but I'm not sure you get that much better information so that you give it the weight that you're giving it. I think you may give it more weight than it deserves. So at the moment, I, and then I don't know about the phone interviews. I, I, but that would be where I would stand. Okay. If I might, I would recommend that we do the intensive telephone interviews. Um, simply because I'm afraid we're going to lose candidates if we s stretch this out too long. Um, a minimum is a day for each of those site visits, even though they're local. You really need to spend the time there if you're going. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I sort of have an investment in this district, and I would really like to see you end up with a superintendent by July 1st. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would recommend that you do the intensive telephone interviews and not do the site visits for the very fact that these are active candidates, and if you've got the right person here, you don't want to lose them. Okay. Ms. Baxter? I would agree. I think the intensive phone interviews are more appropriate. Um, I think if you were to do site visits, that's really having a candidate commit three days, each candidate coming here to interview, then coming to meet with parents and administrators, and then again having us come to their district. I think that's a lot, um, and I don't. I'm not sure that people would love that. Okay. So it sounds like you're hearing a uh, consensus formed that uh, uh, that we would lean toward um, not doing the site visits but opting instead for the intensive uh, phone reference checks. Great. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's a lot of decision making. Okay. And how, Let's go. Who, would be, who would be doing those reference checks and when? Sorry if I'm usurping. Well, let, let me give you a little perspective on that. The reference checking that we do is, is reference checking to determine that there aren't problems in the background, ethical issues, legal issues, those kinds of things. Those are the kinds of checks we do. We don't, and we really can't put ourselves in the position of determining whether their style and, and you know, the way they work with people and, and you know their background is is in in line with with your thinking so um, we would suggest to you that we would put you in touch with whom, whomever your contact is on your committee put you in touch with people that we think can give you some perspective on each of the candidates and that you would assign one or two people from the school committee to do that did that answer the question well, it did gave us some advice. I guess I was hoping that maybe we would make that decision right now as to who would be conducting those interviews and how quickly they might get done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, thoughts on that? We have our two. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Not in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Well, we have, we, you know, we do have uh, the members okay. of the. I would do it. You would. I would do it also. I mean, okay. I'll volunteer if necessary. Okay. And you're suggesting two to three people. Yeah, I would think a couple of people is probably enough. But if you if you had three, it makes the job that much lighter for. for everybody. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's perfectly appropriate for the chair to contact the chair yeah. of the school committee in that district. Mm -hmm. So you know, a job alike type thing is also appropriate for someone assigned by the committee to to contact the references that were listed by the candidates mm -hmm. am i correct mm -hmm. well they we would get you more okay uh, we, we so um so beyond that i mean the internet is available to everyone but i but it's not probably okay. appropriate for me to just start calling everybody i know in plymouth 
and asking what they think of their superintendent or whatever it is. So I mean, it's it, there. There are some parameters that you try to follow when you're doing reference checks. So. Okay. So it sounds like we have some volunteers. Uh, and I, I guess I've been volunteered as well. <laughs> Sounds that way. <laughs> and, is it, and in terms of for the candidates who are not currently superintendents, uh, would it be appropriate for our superintendents to speak with their superintendent? Uh, Actually, at this point, the names are public. It's appropriate for you to call anybody. Okay. I mean, virtually, it's, it's an open field. And I, I, I liked what you said about having some parameters. On the other hand, I wouldn't restrict myself too much because if you know people in the community, those might be the people that you want to talk to. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And these candidates all know that their their name is out there and that we're checking references. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we can certainly begin that right away, mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy to work with Ms. Duvall and Ms. Minick, Ms. Minick, to begin that process, and we can coordinate through working with you through perhaps our central office staff to get us that information that we need to be setting those up okay are there and if there's others who are interested in being part of that uh, I'm not seeing a lot of volunteers okay okay go ahead Sense. One question did you only check these references that they provided or did you go further in the scope of what they provided we typically call people that we know um, and as I said we're not we're not checking references for style we're checking for problems so that's yep. it's a different it's a different level um, so it's entirely possible that you did not check any of the references that they <coughs> listed it's possible yeah, yeah. They're, they're checking yeah. to be sure the person's certified and doesn't have right. DUI on their record or <laughs> <laughs> gun please <charges>. no <laughs> gun charges <laughs> no no okay, okay. So, uh, any other items that you need us to discuss or decide upon? You game to go on for a while? Sure. Yeah. Okay, you did very well with those decisions. Those are very difficult to do. I think you did a great job. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how you're going to set yourselves up for your interviews in terms of what the room will look like, uh, how, how the interviews will unfold. Um, I, I think the mayor was assuming that the interviews would be held here. Okay. Uh, you'd want to think about your setup in terms of how your table and all is going to set up so that you can see the candidate, the candidate can see you, but also are you televising these, I'm assuming? We have been, yes. The, uh, the equipment as well. So you might want to think about that. The other thing you might want to think about is a greeter and the green room. In other words, a holding room for the person, which is someplace close by that might be comfortable with some refreshments, perhaps, and some reading materials and things like that. Because the candidates typically overlap; they they tend to come early, and you know, and, and uh, so you'd want some someone to greet them, uh -huh. and some place where they could uh, relax prior to their interview with you. Okay. Okay. Now, our last interviews we did in this setup just as you see it and we had the candidates sit over there at that um, the empty part of the dais yeah I'd leave that up to you if it worked the last time I don't know you might put them there looking at camera it angle it might be better here but I don't love really to see know. a table just right Could across there but that would you'd have to ask if the if the camera if, if we had a table a, here facing yeah. us could you do one of your remote cameras facing them You'd have to do a shot from over here. Okay, so it's possible. It'd be a one, one, one time thing. Okay. okay. The other thing that we'll want to talk to talk about is, um, I'm assuming that the chair will moderate the uh, the interviews in terms of calling on people to, to ask questions and mm -hmm. that sort of thing, and, and determine whether or not a follow up is appropriate. That sort of thing. Yes. Okay. And we would want to, in your, in your packet, on the right-hand side of your packet, <coughs> is a sheet with interview techniques. I won't go through it, but you might want to read that on your own uh, at your leisure and take a look at that. The other thing that I would ask you to think about is actually formulating some questions. Uh, what we usually do to help you along uh, in terms of the, the question development process is to offer you some themes which are also on the right-hand side of your folder. 
And uh, this is not an exhaustive list. There may be other things that, that are on your mind. But, uh, Mr. Mayor, what we usually do is ask uh, if it's possible for school committee members to pick a theme and to go home and then develop a couple of questions around that theme. And then those would be the interview questions that you, uh, would, that you would use during the interview process with the candidates. Some folks think that you have to ask the same question word for word for each candidate. Uh, I would suggest to you that that really isn't necessary, that you certainly, I think, can, um, can refine the questions uh, depending upon who the candidate is in front of you and, and you know, what background that candidate may have. I would suggest that the thematically the questions remain the same and that thematically they remain in the same order unless you have some unusual circumstances for, for doing otherwise. Um, so I think if you wish, part of the work for this evening would be for school committee members to choose a theme with the understanding that uh, in the interim between now and the interviews, uh, each school committee member would, would develop a, a question or two around that theme. Okay. Okay. So would it be inappropriate for us to look back at the questions that we've used the last two interview rounds? <laughs> Well, I can also tell you that there are questions in your packet. Uh, you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are two sheets of questions <coughs> that, in fact, may, may suffice for the area that you uh, choose. Okay. It's not to well, say that these just, are... We've just been through this drill. Yeah. So we had a whole list of questions developed. They may still be relevant, yeah. Okay. Hope so. so what are folks' preferences on uh, um, We can certainly circulate the former questions from the past and you'll also have these sample uh, questions um, but in terms of the idea of choosing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten well, we've got 12 12 potential categories um, there's 10 of us so we would have to develop you know, 12, are you suggesting 12 questions? 10 questions, 10, 12 questions. Okay. You may not even get to 10. You might, it's usually about eight questions that you get in. Okay. Um, and you don't have to hit all the themes. I mean, some of these themes may not be relevant for your district, and, okay. and so you may not wish to do them all. Or you may have other themes mm -hmm. that you'd wish to introduce. Okay. Okay. So what are people's thoughts in terms of the, the pr thematic approach versus looking at the questions we've used in the past, looking at the other sample questions. Question? I mean, yes. I just have a question. So um, if we're only going to make eight and that there's 12, did you, you had suggested that we keep them in the same order, though, here? Is that? No, in whatever order you choose, not the order on the sheet. Oh, okay. So whatever order we choose, just keep yeah. them in the same order for all the candidates. And I would suggest that you, I would suggest that you develop 10 questions so that you have enough, but you might not get through all 10. And you'll, okay. you'll know, obviously, as you get into the interview process. <clears throat> or, I mean, if you've got questions and you just want to assign the questions that you have, that's perfectly fine if you feel they'll suffice. Thoughts, input, Ms. Minnick? Simply that we have enough new members on the committee that I'd like to give them the opportunity to look at those questions that we used the last time and see if they <coughs> believe they're relevant and that, you know, I just think they should have the opportunity to say, you know, this is something that's important to me. I'd like to see a question about this, and that's not okay. included in this. So well, I, I can, don't know. I yeah. don't know when we're going to sit around and make up well, that's, questions. Well, that's yeah. Particularly if it's Saturday. <laughs> if this is happening on Saturday, that's kind of uh, right. yeah. So we need, and when of course, um, in terms of we were to begin deliberating on what questions we should ask, that should be done in an open meeting. Exactly. It's not really a ministerial function. Exactly. Developing questions. So we either have to it circulate it, have have people submit things, their thoughts and input individually to a central place um, and then delegate to somebody to select you know the 10 questions or something uh, there's just there, there can't be any interplay or, or back and forth about it there can't be any deliberation we add about to it. our agenda on Wednesday what's that I said could we add to our agenda on Wednesday evening we are having a meeting then I don't know how long it will take mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be pretty late to do that we'd have to have had posted it by today uh, in order to make the 
Yeah. Okay. And we're not so. starting to 7.30. It's 7.30 to 9.30. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, just trying to help. I, I okay. Thoroughly confuse everybody by saying this. But usually at the school committee level, there isn't a lot of refinement of the question because at your level, what you're more likely to do is to have a conversational kind of um, interview with the candidates. So I'm not sure that there's a lot of drafting and redrafting and, and looking at closely at language so much as making sure that the question that you ask is clear. What you might want to do is consider coming early on the date of your interviews, posted as, as an early meeting, or posted as, as earlier in the evening, and then just briefly share what your questions are and determine what the order might be. That typically takes a half hour or so, usually, when you really, when you really get down to it. It's just another way of expediting things if you choose to go. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Shefflow. I think last time, uh, Dr. Nash, didn't you assign us each a question? Um, I think yeah, I might that's have done that. Yeah. Yes. I would just suggest, because I think a concern last time was if we, <laughs> we discuss them <laughs> and we the questions ahead of time, everyone's going to know what the questions are. So yeah. you know, I, would, I would say either redistribute the questions again, or if you like, assign, assign a theme to everybody, and we can be adult about it and come up with a question. What if I take about the, last, the questions from last time, look at the questions we've got here, we'll look at the themes. If any of you want to email me with a particular area you're interested in, then I'll see you get those questions. And otherwise, I'll just assign them. Well, Art sits there and laughs. I, <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just not very difficult, but it's wonderful. That's it's great. It's just easier to do, Absolutely. and if no one else objects to it, I'm happy to do it. I just think, given our time frame, it's hard for us to do this and in a deliberative interest, way because we know. have to have a meet. We have to have a posted meeting yeah. if we're going to have a, a okay. substantive discussion about what the questions are. That's terrific. So that's great. Um, so then just go ahead, Mr. Ball. Well, on that, I was just wondering because, I mean, we get critiqued on everything and letters on everything that we've done. So my question is, were the last questions that we had to the school committee, did we have any overall complaints or critiques on them that we might want to address and incorporate into these questions? That's what the only thing. Because I'm not really sure that we had, I mean, if I know we had issues about other things, but I'm not sure if we had issues about that. Because if we didn't, then we have okay questions because if we weren't okay to the public, or was, I'm sure somebody would have said something, and I think that's the only thing. And otherwise, I'm in total support of um, Dr. Nash gathering and wrapping bows on him and handing him back out. <laughs> I would. I, I don't recall any complaints about our questions. I really do think if if somebody has a specific issue or concern or question that and, and you don't see it reflected in the list of questions that were already asked, I would suggest that you forward that to Dr. Nash. And I also just want to go on record as saying that I had, I, I was, um, what's the right word? I was miffed when we were assigned questions the last time because I felt like it was our decision to select those which questions we wanted. Mm -hmm. However, having, having now had a conversation where we're asking her to assign questions to us. I'm perfectly comfortable with that. So Unless, of course, we write her and say we'd like to ask questions along this line. So yes. we do have well, that open. And I will. Tell me I will that. tell yeah. her which one I want to ask if, you know, given that I'm sure you know. she's offered that, so I will let her know. Okay. Mr. Moore. <laughs> yeah, you know, I did get one criticism about our questions last time, and I think it actually was more of a criticism of the committee. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But the way the, the way the criticism was framed was that that too many of our questions um, were asking were sort of general sort of what would you do as a superintendent how would you approach those kinds of questions and um, the criticism was that we hadn't, didn't ask how would you achieve an objective which we have decided we want to get to. And I mean, like I said, it's sort of a criticism of the committee because the committee doesn't, hasn't set out some objectives and we're looking for somebody to get there. And maybe, and maybe that's not how we should work. I don't know, but I mean, that was the thought. The thought was, well, maybe you need to ask some questions where, you know, we've got a problem here. How would you solve it? And get so really much more concrete and specific answers about a specific and concrete 
thing in the district as opposed to where the answers tended to be was sort of you know how what's your vision how do you go about how do you go about forming consensus yeah, 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 yeah. more like look you know we want to get um, you know uh, better uh, participation in our lunch program how are you going to get that to happen or you know some specific some specific thing that that we know we'd like to have how are we going to do it the problem again would be then we'd all have to agree that that's something we all were sure we wanted to see happen and you know. I think we have a district improvement plan but I don't think that we have some sp I, I'm, I mean I'm not going to ask somebody walking in off the street how they would change the late start time but they felt that that would be right so but they felt like it'd be much more revealing in terms of what the candidates could actually of how they approached the problem if you asked them how they would approach a problem you know a specific problem and so anyway, that would be something I would think so of. If Dr. Nash could have some sees questions. A, an area mm -hmm. where she thinks a question could be reworded that would get more specific or would. Where we all agree on the issue. I think the problem with that is in order to solve that sort of <coughs> problem, they need to know what's gone on before mm -hmm. who are the players in that problem. Right. And it really puts them at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and the thing is, it may be, well, the temptation to hold them to this answer if we hire them. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, I think it was a valid criticism in terms of some of our questions were a little too general, allowed people just to answer with a series of appropriate buzzwords and, you know. That was a criticism, so that's um, right, that buzzwords. But, but I understand the problem in the other direction of being, if you're too specific, you, you may be asking them to be more specific than is really fair to ask them to be. I don't know. I think a lot of those questions that we do ask a lot of times are around the idea or the theme of um, just being on these committees in the past. Can you, can you speak to us about a challenging situation <coughs> you've worked on in your district and how um, you, you uh, mm -hmm. work to fix it and who are the players, the constituents you brought in to help solve that problem? Can you explain your, your, your methods? And maybe at that point we can think of one of the areas in our own district that that could be applicable to and see if it might fit in. Okay. Other thoughts or comments? So it sounds like what we'll do is, is uh, redistribute to the committee um, our questions from the last process. And obviously we have the packet of some other suggested um, questions. So I guess the homework would be to ask committee members to take a look through all that and then communicate just directly to the superintendent with your input suggestions. If there's a question that stands out in the samples or a question that stands out on the last one, good or bad, just communicate that to her mm -hmm. or if something's missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love this question. Love Lisa. Potential. I hate this question. Love Howard. <laughs> Potential. That's, that's a possibility. Like, I don't know what to do. I also think it's important that we, we stick to those questions that we did ask and that, um, again, I, I, want, I don't want the perception in the public being that our interim superintendent was responsible for the questions that, um, that we were to ask to hire our superintendent mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for our schools and right. it shouldn't be conducted by an interim superintendent mm -hmm. on the questions she she's asking and so I think it's important that we stick to the questions that we used last time and certainly if someone has a theme that they're really interested in either call or email and make sure that you're involved in the conversation and uh, that the public knows that that's the approach we're using and certainly we're not saddling Dr. Nash with creating these questions, but they really are our questions that we've worked on in the past, and we're just asking her to redistribute them out, and if there's something that we want to add to them, we'll speak to her about it, and um, she'll speak to us about it before we roll them out to the finalists. And I would just clarify that that's what I was going to do. Certainly. We have three different people from the time last time around, so I'm going <coughs> to tell me your preference of those questions. You may or may not get the same one you asked before. Those were the questions. I'm not making up any of the questions. Sure. Okay. You may, me, sure. you, all right. You may not be making up any of the questions. However, I trust your input as far as from the position of experience that you have to be able to look at the questions, and if they need something or you feel that they need something or they need from your experience already being in the district. I mean, that's very, very valuable. 
um, even though they are basically the same questions, if you found them to be better or that there was something could be better, I would be more apt to trust and, and want to discuss that because um, I just value your experience from so many years that you've been doing this that I don't think it would be left to the burden of or to the um, misconception that you, the superintendent, was the person responsible for our search or, or the questions or anything. We have questions. I think maybe they might need to be refined. I would love them to be changed a little bit because I wasn't really totally happy with them exactly the way, way they were. Not all of them, some of them. But mostly if you felt the need to change them, I would hope that you would change it and that it, we still wouldn't need to go and say that you were responsible for it because it's still us. I think your questions were very good the last time around. And what mm -hmm. I would suggest is when you get those questions, you let me know your preferences on them. And if you, once you have that question, you have a need to change the wording, et cetera, then I think that's perfectly within your right. Great. But I think that that's the important way of doing and it. we can call you and ask for your input then. You certainly can. <laughs> <are. laughs> Mrs. Minnick. Okay. Um, with your approval, if you are tired of standing there after an hour now, would you like to have a seat? Well, at I'm the fine. Table? I'm fine. Thanks. Just feel I bad for you having okay, leaning on a podium the whole evening. Okay, so um, so that I hope addresses that issue of the questions, development of the questions. It does. Okay. I think that's a fine way to go ahead. Okay. Uh, just remind you of of the uh, the need to think about an icebreaker question. In other words, the first question that you ask which typically might come from the chair. And it's the general question in terms of, you know, what brings you here is, is and, you know, any variations what in that theme. Yeah. So you grow up. <laughs> I think that's what it How this fits into your career path and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, is, are you an attorney, sir? No, I am not. Okay. Is there an attorney on the board? There are several. Uh, oh gosh. Okay. There's one, there's one over there too. And I don't have. So I don't have to buy them. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to. This one's an attorney. I don't have to go over the kinds of questions to avoid. There are questions that you should not be asking or even implying in your questioning, in terms of the candidates. And I'll, I'll assume that you folks have a good handle on that. Uh, the other thing that you may want to think about in terms of the organization of your of your evening with the candidates is. Um, do you want the candidates to make an opening statement or would you prefer that the candidates be given time at the end of their interview for questions and a concluding statement? And we went through this with the, uh, with the screening committee. I don't know what you decided in the screening committee actually. Did you, how did you do it? Um, the last question we included in uh, the opportunity for a closing statement. Okay. But you also find that in their opening remarks when they talk about that icebreaker that many will weave in kind of an opening statement as well. So you have your own in-house expert for questions right here. He's been through it already. Okay. And probably um, many of the, or some of the questions will, will be similar to the questions that you asked in, in your screening committee, which is fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other things that we might want to talk about, uh, public relations, who will be talking and communicating with the press or those who make inquiries into the process at this point? The chair? The chair or the vice chair. Okay. All righty. And uh, let me just go through a couple of other things with you. In the back of your, uh, again, on the right-hand side of your folder, there's a candidate evaluation form, which nobody uses. And the reason nobody uses it is because everybody seems to have their own way of uh, sort of taking notes uh, regarding the candidates, but you're certainly welcome to use this to reproduce it if you choose or to revise it in any way that, that you would like. And having gone through everything, the, the, last, uh, the last thing I would leave you with is to <coughs> remind you that you went through the process of developing a candidate profile. And so one of the things, one of the important things that I think you want to do as you think about your interviews and the questions that you select for your interview, your interviews, is the profile and asking questions that in fact are aligned with your profile. Because those are the those are the things that you as a school committee determined were important for you uh, in your next superintendent. And that process included community input into that into that whole process. So the candidate profile, which is on the left-hand side of your, your packet toward the, uh, toward the back, would be something that you would want to review.
in anticipation of your hmm. things. Thank you for bringing that up as well. I can tell you from being part of the screening committee that was one of the, uh, the homework assignments that I made sure that we all did preparation for screening of the applications was to look at the, uh, the profile that was developed by the community and make sure it was aligned with the appli applicants. And that's really how we did our work on the screening committee. So I'm hoping that as uh, we get to meet these finalists again, you should see that they do represent what the community has asked for in the profile. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions or the areas that, that uh, really Are there any uh, follow-on questions or? Okay. Mr. Moore? Not, not really for you. I was wondering if we should at least tentatively schedule a date for, to, for making the decision of who we're going to hire. I mean, I know we need to have all of us there. Um, since we're not all here, but maybe have at least a date that we put a mark on for those of us who are here so that at least get that process started so that in the, if it turns out that either Downey or Pam can't do it, we'll go from there. But maybe we should go ahead and schedule that now sooner rather than later. Uh, well, the good question we have the uh, some of it will also depend on when these other meetings get scheduled um, although Ms. Minnick will be out of town until I'm happy that the school committee is scheduling around my mm -hmm. vacation it's very thoughtful You're terrible <laughs> when are you coming back though the 30th the 30th which is after the week during which okay. we hope right. most of this will have happened so there's the potential of uh, yeah, April Fool's Day. The 31st. Yeah. The 31st or the 1st or so those are possibilities. Okay. So that's just our own right. internal calibration. May I share that with the candidates because they may ask in general what the decision date would I be. I think that's you can certainly if that yeah, I think I aiming think, at it. Yeah, that's our goal is, is to have a is to have a a very beginning of April. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. By the first week of April, hopefully. Great. Okay. I think I'm going to be unavailable on Monday, March 31st. Okay. Well, April Fools Day. April Fools, I should be available. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like April one rather than we yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It will be a bright sunny day, 70 degrees, light breeze, no snow. And we're going to drive in. You we can know. hope. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bettencourt. Thank you. You did a great job. You thank really you. did. A lot of decisions, and uh, you handled them very well. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. You did a great job. Yes. Uh, we'll be in touch. We will. Thank you. Okay, the only other items on our agenda, oh, except Ms. Minnick. Except for Ms. Minnick, I was always a fly in the um, I sent you, I think, a summary of the discussion that we had at a meeting last August with administrators. Do you remember that? At Smith College, we had a meeting with them. And I took notes of all the things they were concerned about. Mm -hmm. I think I've sent that to you. A while ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A long time ago. Right. Well, several weeks after that meeting. Right. Do you think you have it? Or I can go through I can look and see if I have it. Um, but yeah, it was in the August. That was, mm -hmm. if, I don't know if anybody else is interested in reviewing what those Administrator said to us about things that were. Files, we like basically a did a sort of a round robin. Dr. Nash had set it up so that we spoke with different, you know, we yeah. said it. Progressive dinner, if you will, <laughs> and talked with different groups of administrators about what they saw as important issues. And there was a lot of repetition in many ways, but there were also just some interesting topics that were raised about what, what they thought was important in. A new superintendent and we did not revise our interview questions necessarily to reflect those things but just knowing what they had said helps you hear the answers differently, differently. so I thought if that's valuable I'll see if I can unearth it okay be great. great thank you um, 
Okay, so the only other uh, announcements are just to remind people that we have our school committee training uh, on the 19th of this week at 7.30 here at the JFK Community Room. Um, and that budget and property will be meeting, the budget and property committee will be meeting on Thursday, March 20th at 5 p.m. at the superintendent's office. Um, and then the school committee will have its next regular meeting on next Thursday, March 27th at 7.15 p.m. And there's a possibility that there may be um, superintendent candidate interviews in the intervening time to be determined. So. Exactly. Miscellaneous business. Yes. We may want to start deciding the nights we won't be meeting <laughs> at the rate we're going. Um, okay, so uh, no other business, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? <laughs> this special meeting of the Northampton School Committee is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>